We're now ready to look at the peripheral nerve, either the nerve heading out from the plexus to supply structure within the limb. I'm going to be drawing them onto this skeleton here first, and as always you can find a link to every illustration in the description below. If you can, I'd recommend drawing each of these nerves in a different colour to help you link to the motor and sensory supply later on. Anteriorly, we have two main nerves. The femoral nerve enters the thigh by passing underneath the inguinal ligament and almost immediately divides into several branches that pass to skin and muscles. One of these branches will travel deep to sartorius and then appears in the leg of the saphenous nerve. On the medial aspect of the thigh is the obturator nerve, so called because it enters the thigh by passing through the obturator foramen. Posteriorly, we'll find three main nerves passing through the greater sciatic foramen. Now we also have a muscle in this space, piriformis, which I'll draw on here, and the nerves have to pass around this muscle in order to leave the pelvis. Above and below piriformis, we'll find the superior and inferior gluteal nerves. We also have the largest nerve in the body, the sciatic nerve, and this normally passes under the inferior border of piriformis, although sometimes it can pass straight through the muscle. The sciatic continues down the posterior aspect of the thigh until it reaches the space at the back of the knee known as the popliteal fossa. Here it divides into two major branches. The tibial nerve passes deep into the posterior leg and onto the sole of the foot. The common perineal or fibular nerve heads laterally, passing around the neck of the fibula before dividing again. The superficial perineal branch travels through the lateral aspect of the leg and onto the dorsum of the foot. Meanwhile, the deep perineal branch continues into the anterior aspect of the leg. Finally, small branches from the tibial and common perineal nerves unite to form the fural nerve, a superficial nerve found on the back of the leg. Now we have our nerves, let's look at what they supply. The sensory innervation of the peripheral nerve broadly matches their location. For example, the obturator nerve lies in the medial thigh and supplies skin over the medial thigh. Similarly, the femoral nerve supplies skin over the anterior thigh, but also has that saphenous branch that will innervate the medial aspect of the leg. Posteriorly, the sciatic nerve doesn't have any direct sensory supply, but its branches go on to innervate the rest of the skin below the knee. So, proximally, the posterior and lateral leg is supplied by the fural nerve. The superficial perineal nerve supplies the dorsum of the foot, whilst the tibial nerve supplies the heel and the sole of the foot via its plantar branches. Finally, the deep perineal nerve innervates the skin of the first web space between the first and second digit. Most of these nerves will have a motor function as well, but the fural and saphenous nerve only contain sensory fibres. Generally speaking, the major peripheral nerves each innervate a compartment. So before we look at the nerves, I'm going to draw out those compartments on our figure. In the thigh, we'll have anterior and medial compartments divided by sartorius. Posteriorly, there's the gluteal region, and below that, the posterior compartment of the thigh. Coming down to the leg, we can see the anterior and lateral compartments here, and the posterior compartment will be here. Now, technically, the posterior compartment can be subdivided into superficial and deep groups. However, since they have the same nerve supply, and it's easier to draw, I'm just going to leave it as one group for now. Muscles in the gluteal region are innervated by the two gluteal nerves. The superior gluteal supplies gluteus medius, minimus and tensor fasciolata, whilst the inferior nerve supplies gluteus maximus. The anterior thigh is supplied by the femoral nerve. The obturator nerve supplies most of the medial compartment, and the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve supplies the posterior thigh. There are some exceptions to these rules. So, despite lying in the medial compartment, the posterior portion of adductor magnus is actually supplied by branches of the sciatic nerve. Similarly, the short head of bicep femoris isn't innervated by the tibial nerve as the other hamstrings are, but by the common perineal nerve that runs alongside it. 
All of the muscles in the leg are innervated by branches of the sciatic nerve. So the tibial nerve supplies the posterior leg before heading into the foot. The superficial branch supplies the lateral compartment, and the deep perineal branch supplies muscles in the anterior leg. If you've drawn along, you should now have illustrations of the motor and sensory supply of the lower limb. In the final video, I'm going to look at how we can apply this to clinical situations. But until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I will see you soon. Cheers.